Welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're in lovely CYOW. We're gonna take the Baron twin and we're gonna set it up for the first look video at using the Bravo throttle quadrant. So let's go ahead, jump into SPAD.next and let's get started. When we come into SPAD.next, currently running 9.11, uh, 0.3. But in the 9.11s currently, the Bravo TQ looks like a standard joystick uh, and Axie device, standard game controller. There isn't a custom UI yet for it. So things like the LEDs and gear lights are not yet available. However, we can set the rest of the unit up just like normal. So what you'll see is there are six axes for the six control axes and everything else for buttons and switches is represented by 48 buttons. Now we're gonna get into how we configure those, but first we need to hop back into the sim and make sure that we turn everything off. Now that we've jumped back into flight sim, we wanna make sure to bring up the escape menu, head into our control options, find your Bravo throttle quadrant. Now, normally you're gonna see default with all of these things hooked up. So generally what I like to do is I'm gonna take this current profile, I'm just gonna click on new, right? And so we're gonna make a new one and we're gonna call this Bravo blank. Now, as you can see, there is nothing assigned and that's what we want because we're going to move everything into spad.next. So we're going to hit apply and save. And that's now our config. So we're going to jump back over to spad next and get started. When we start looking at all these buttons and events, one of the things we want to do is figure out how to best set this up. You can press buttons and move switches to try and figure things out. But I kind of grabbed the screenshot that comes from Microsoft Flight Sim, which unfortunately is, well, missing a whole bunch of buttons and uh, events. Uh, but I went ahead and documented those. So what you're going to find is button one through eight is going to be the autopilot mode selectors, one through seven, and the autopilot master button is button eight. 9, 10, 11, and 12 are actually the reverse Axie buttons, which you find on Axie 2, 3, 4, and 5. So when you take the handles off, you're going to see three contacts. Uh, one would be ground, and then the other two are the two separate buttons. Button 13 and 14 is the encoder for the value selector. Um, so it just shows up as buttons like most encoders do. And so we know those are on 13 and 14. 15 and 16 are going to be your flaps down and flaps up switch. 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 are the buttons that show up for the mode selector switch. Now we're going to use this depending on what mode it's in to define what the encoder is controlling. Again, listed on that image, but 22 and 23 are the trim rolling forward trim rolling reverse. Button 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 are axis one through five in the bottom position. So when you push the axis to the bottom and then click into the detent or the reverser range or cutoff range, those aren't axis range. The axis actually goes to the bottom and in the detent, it has a switch. For some reason, they skip 29, 30, 31, 32, and the six axis uh, actually is button 33 for its detent. Then what's kind of neat is button 29 is the toga button, so the red takeoff go around button, shared axis one and two. Button 30 is on axis number three, and button 48 is on axi number four. So it's kind of neat that this one actually is shared in two locations. 
Uh, and then the other two are available. From there, what you'll find, 31 and 32 is the gear up and down selector. Then the seven rocker switches have both an up button and a down button, 34, 35, 36, 37. Now what you're gonna see is we're going to reconfigure this device to make switches, switches, and things that make more sense. Jump back into spad.next, now with an understanding of what we're trying to achieve. The first thing that we want to do is we want to go to the device settings and we're gonna make new global settings for the Bravo. When we set up our control devices, we have a very unique capability inside of spad.next to interpret buttons and events in multiple ways. Touched on this before with other things, including the alpha. Buttons, SPAD, you can define them as a push button, which has extra events, meaning I can have a short press, I can have a held long press, I can have a button released. I have more events I'm capable of doing on a push button. A simple push button is more like what you're used to seeing inside of games and game pads. This will have a button pressed and a button released. But that's cool because you can set events for when the button's pressed and then for when it's let go. With a switch, this will now give you two different modes, a switched on event and a switched off event. This could be similar to a push button but this makes a little bit more sense where we want switched on and switched off events. You can also disable it, so you just remove it from the UI. So when we think about controllers with the buttons, we were looking at it and thinking, how should we do these? As I chose, button one was going to be a push button. And that's because I'll be able to have toggle events with the simple push, if I hold it for a second, I would be able to assign additional events. So this will become in handy because on a simple press, I'm going to select heading mode, but on a long press, it will capture or sync the heading. Same thing with button two, since this is a mode selector, I'm gonna give myself the ability to have a couple of different events, button press short, button press long. So I did that for all first eight buttons. Button nine are the reverser, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Those are reverser axes. With the reverser axes, they're gonna lock in place. So with them, instead of having something that may repeat events, I went with a switch, a switched on state. It will send the throttle decrease command. Now, one of the things that I've done in the past is I leverage the fact that you can send multiple events. And you're gonna see this when we program for throttle reversers. We're actually going to send throttle decrease, a pause, throttle decrease, a pause, throttle decrease, a pause, throttle decrease, a pause, throttle decrease. And that will give us that feeling like opening up the reverser. So instead of just opening it and it instantly jumping to 100% of reverse thrust, it's going to take a second or two to fully deploy. What that also does for us is it allows us to assign a switch off event. So when we turn off those, we'll set it to throttle cut, which will set the throttle to idle. So we won't have to turn them off and then bump the throttle up a little bit just to get it to register coming out of reverse. Button 13 and 14 is on an encoder. And so with encoders, I always use simple buttons because it's simple presses and may, makes it nice and easy. 15 all the way through 21, we've left those as push buttons. So that way 15 and 16, which is on the flaps, I'll be able to have a push down, push up, as well as a hold up, hold down. On 17 through 21, I didn't change them because we're actually not even going to assign events to these. Instead, when we assign the events to the increment knob, 13 and 14, we're just going to check what state those values are in. Button 22 and 23, as we found out before, is our trim wheel. So again, because that's an encoder, 
we've set those to simple push button. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, those were the first five detents. We've set those to switch mode. 29 and 30 were the toga buttons. We've got 32, 33, and 34 are also in switch states. Because we have the ability in SPAD.next to assign switch on and switch off events, we don't need these bottom buttons on the rocker switches. Instead, I'm just going to disable all the odd number 35 through 47 so they don't even show up and I don't even have to see them in the UI. And then button 48, which is another one of these toga buttons, but for basically this knob here, we're going to go ahead and leave that as a push button as well. Once you've made these changes and you click OK, normally this is going to prompt you. For these changes to take effect, you must restart SPAD.next. All right, for the second half of this, let's hop in here in San Diego to the Baron and see what we're up to. Let's head inside. Now that we're inside the Baron, let's go ahead and look at how, now that you've set up the controller, and again, it was very important that we go through the button settings, because otherwise, the events that you download from any of my mappings aren't necessarily going to work because you're not in those switch events, right? So now that we've got that, let's jump over to spad.next real quick, and then we're going to download these configs and break through them. What you want to do is come to your Bravo TQ, click on any button. Obviously, you'll have nothing in it, but if you just come over to Online Snippets, you're going to then be able to come in to the Bravo Quadrant, and we're going to look for Microsoft Flight, Microsoft Flight Sim, and we want complete device and you're gonna see Microsoft Flight Sim Baron Honeycomb Bravo. Now this is based on this Baron and the configuration we're about to break down in this YouTube video and it's intended for the Baron but it might be able to be used for other twins or at least as a basis that you can copy in and then modify as needed looking at buttons 1 through 8 that is the 1 through 7 mode selectors and number 8 is the autopilot so button 1 we are doing the short press is giving us our AP panel heading hold so that's going to toggle on and off our heading mode for the autopilot and if we hold it for one second or a long press you're then going to get heading hold mode, which is going to activate heading mode and it's going to capture your current heading. Button two, AP nav one hold. So this is going to enable the nav hold function. Three is approach hold. So that'll toggle approach hold on and off. Because VNAV doesn't have a button press event or a SIM event, we are toggling the XML var. And so if you do have the working title G1000 mod, I guess it's not really a mod, it's a early access download, that uses this. And so we're doing a toggle of the bit, which is effectively toggling VNAV on and off. Button five, that's gonna be your altitude uh, autopilot altitude panel button. So this is gonna to toggle altitude on and off. VS hold, so same thing, we can toggle the VS hold on and off. Uh, then we've got send flight level change. So on the IAS button, we're using that for flight level change. And if you hold it for longer than one second, it's also going to set the speed to the value that your current airspeed is at. Eight is going to be the autopilot master. So that's off to the right. So when we go to button nine, you will remember that nine, 10, 11, and 12, those were these guys here, the reverse throttle levers that are actually buttons. 
Uh, we don't have those since we're using the GA setup. When we go to 13, button 13 is the clockwise direction of the knob. Button 14 is the counterclockwise direction. Then 17 through 21 is the buttons that the rotary selector set. Now what we've gone and done is used nothing on 17 through 21. Instead, we've mapped numerous events to the encoder and it checks whether or not those buttons are active. So the first event we assigned was button 17 and button 17 is when the knob is in the bottom most setting and that's the IAS or the airspeed or flight level change. So we've gone ahead and we've said if this is equal to one, increment autopilot airspeed hold variable by one. And note, we're gonna end processing here and that's just so since this confirmed, doesn't need to go through the rest of the events. So 18 is when you're on the course selector. So we're going to modify if it's a one, nav OBS one, we're going to increment by one and we're going to also set limits of one and 360 and we'll allow rollover. So when it hits 360 and you turn it again, it's going to wrap around for us. And again, we end processing. 19, we're going to do heading lock uh, deer. So this is going to be our heading lock direction, I guess. Same thing, we're going to increment by one. We do have limits, minimum one, maximum 360 and it will roll over for you. And again, we will end the processing. Now, on the next one, this is your airspeed vertical hold speed. Uh, same thing, it's got to be on button 20 or the second from the top. And that will increase by 100. So I also set limits with no rollover of minus 6,000 and plus 6,000. Uh, if your plane will allow you to go higher or lower, hey, up those values. I'm I'm good with minus 6,000 and plus 6,000 for now. Now, where we get a little bit cooler, we're going to take the altitude increments and we're going to create three ranges. So the first range is going to check that button 21 equals one and that currently the autopilot altitude lock variable is less than 10,000. And if it is, then on this turn, we'll allow you to go up and, in, and increase that altitude lock variable by 100 feet. And of course, end processing. Now, if button 21 equals one and it's greater than equal to 10,000 feet and less than 18,000 feet, well, we're gonna now start incrementing by five hundredths. Then finally, again, 21 is a one and our altitude lock variable is greater than or equal to 18,000. Now we're in the flight level, so let's go ahead and increment by a thousand at a time. Then when we were done setting all that up, and of course, I could have control C, control V, or used the GUI to copy this event. Then I pasted it and modified the conditions and the values. Well, then I went ahead and I copied all the events so that when we came to button 14, we just clicked on paste. And when it said replace all, we said yes. And it replaced everything. And then what I went ahead and did was I just clicked on it, double clicked here and changed it from increment to decrement. And so we went through all the events and changed them all from increments to decrements and we were done. So that is what makes that knob versatile is obviously the selector knob starting at 17. But what you'll see here is because we're able to actually check the knob itself and the value of the knob, we did not need to use 17 through 21 to create anything. Now in other videos, I've had those buttons or a rotary switch on another device set a local variable like selector mode. 
And 17 would have set a value of 1 and 2 and 3, 4, 5, etc. So instead of doing that, where these would have, instead of the joystick, looked up the local variable and checked the value of that local variable, I instead just pointed them directly at the switch and then didn't assign anything to the switch. All right, so 15 and 16, these are the flap lever up and down. Now what you'll see we did here is we went ahead and we added a less than one second, so a short time is going to increase the flaps, so that will increase how much flaps is deployed. But if I hold it down for longer than a second, that long press will do the flaps down event and it will full, it'll throw out full flaps. So I don't have to increment my way through. Uh, I hold it down and I will get full flaps. So on 16, which is the moving up event, a short tap, a single click, is gonna give us a decrease in the amount of flaps we have out while a hold it up for a second will clean the flaps all the way to the up position. Jumping on over to 22 and 23, that is our wheel. So if we roll it forward, you see it clicking, roll it backwards, it clicks. So for 22, we're gonna decrement elevator trim percent by one. And this is because we're doing a nose down, so that decrements the trim. And we're using percentage so that we can dial in as much or as little precision as we want. If it's going too fast, I can change this to a 0.5. If it's going too slow, I could maybe go to increment or decrement by 2%. So this gives you the ability to do a lot more uh, precision and touch with your trim. 24, 25, 26, where we get into the detents underneath the axes. So that's the first axis. So as you see it drop down and I click it, that's 24. Uh, and with the throttles in the Baron, uh, there's nothing to do in those detents. Now for 26 and 27, we had to figure out, since these are buttons, or I set them as switches, we had to figure out how we could do the prop feathering. And so what I figured out was similar to what I've done in the past with throttle reversers that are finicky, uh, is when the switch goes on, I send the prop pitch decrease event with a parameter of five. So that's gonna decrease by five units. And the full prop feather position is minus 25. So this will move from zero to minus five. Then it's gonna wait 100 milliseconds so 0.1 seconds, and then it's going to send it again, wait, again, wait, again, wait, again. So in that half a second period of time, you'll see it smoothly go down into the full feathered position. When we pop it out, so when we remove it out of the feathered position, it's going to click it back to setting the pitch to zero. Uh, so yeah, you've got that nice all the way down and fully feathered and unfeathered. So we did the usual thing. We hit copy all events. We went to switch 27 and we pasted it all. And then we just went in, highlighted, and we went through each event and we went from pitch one down to pitch two, clicked okay, clicked okay, clicked okay, ran through all of those events and we were good to go. 28, so 28 is the switch at the bottom of Axi 5, or our first mixture. Now, what I wanted to do was, well, since the bottom of the Axi is the bottom of the mixture in the Baron, I figured let's use the switch to also function for our fuel selector. So when the switch goes on, it's gonna set the fuel selector for the left engine. It's going to set it to zero. So basically turn off the fuel selector. As soon as we 
take it out of that position and put it into mixture idle, it's going to set the fuel valve to on, which when you look at the sim and you run the sim events under the plus and you move the switch, it would tell you fuel selector set parameter two. So all I did was I spent my time inside of this guy. I had the event monitor running. I had it set to start. And then in the sim, I simply moved the fuel selector to the on position and it told me what to do. And then we went to the next fuel selector and it showed us two gets set to three and for off it's set to zero. So when we headed back over to our event, that is gonna toggle off that one's fuel selector and now it puts it on. So perfect for setting up cutoffs. 29 is the toga button on the first throttle or axie lever, axie one. So we set that up as toga because that's where we've got our black handle with the red button. 30 uh, set to nothing because that would be one of the other buttons on a handle. And then 31 and 32 are the gear lever positions. So when we look at this, 31 and 32, those are our gear lever position. And what I find works well is sometimes you can use the gear set event. So here, gear set zero, and then gear set one, and those work perfect. Sometimes uh, they only support the toggle event. The gear set won't work. And in those cases, we'll actually put in conditions to check first if the gear's in the right position to send the toggle event. That way your lever can't get out of sync. 33 was the fuel selector, just like we said. 34 is the parking brake switch. When we look at this, we turned off all the bottoms and turned all the tops into switches. Switch on, switch off. So starting from left to right, that goes up to 46. So we went with parking brakes. I then went with the wing lights. I then went with the glare shield lights. I then went with the panel lights. We went with the de-icing toggles. We put all those on a single switch. Uh, then we got the electric fuel pumps. I put both those on a switch. I got the cowl flaps. I've got those on the switch. So we're completely switched out and got all the switches assigned and 48 is Axie 5. That's everything for the throttle quadrant. Quick bonus, since I was doing the Baron, I did the Alpha Yoke. This does expect that when it comes to your device, you followed my other video. And again, you have your buttons configured the same way. So button one, simple, button two, push button. Then I've got three through 12, simple push button. Then you're gonna see from 13 all the way down to 30, we're turning the odds to switches and the evens to disabled because we don't need the bottom of all those buttons. And then 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, those are set up as switches because that's the rotary knob or the magneto switch. The alpha yoke's based very similar on a bunch of my others, right? Button one uh, fires off a V-Joy. That V-Joy I have mapped inside of uh, that sim. That way the V-Joy button can be controlled from any of my yokes, my joysticks, my side sticks, uh, two sticks at a time if, if it's dual sim operation. Um, since you can only map one button in VATSIM, I found this to be the easiest way to do it and then not have to ever change them again. Button number two, um, that is the white button. We've covered this before, so you can look up those things and see what buttons are what. Autopilot off, so press it short, autopilot off. Hold it for a long time, it's gonna kick off the autopilot and the yaw damper. Again, this plane doesn't have a yaw damper, but I copy this yoke setup pretty much to everything. I was trying to play with squawk box for the white button on, on the right hand side. Uh, that was to do squawk box iden for VATSIM. The red button on the right side, didn't know what else to do, so I put pushback on it so I could start up pushback if I wanted to. Then for five and six, I set my trim up and trim down events, but 
since this is a split trim, they actually check that the seven and eight buttons are also depressed. So if I just press one or the other, the trim is not going to run. But if I press them both together, the trim will run. Nine, same thing. If we jump on over to the right hand side, the left and right split trims, those are set to rudder trim left and right. And then same thing, they're checking button 11 and 12 to make sure they're also depressed. And if they are, then it fires. So it leverages that split trim. 13, that's the switch labeled alternator. And again, 14 is off, so it goes to 15. That's gonna be the master battery on and off. 17 is our avionics master on and off. And then 19, since this plane doesn't have two avionics masters, uh, I went ahead and I threw pedo heat onto that switch. Then when we came on down, we've got beacon, landing, taxi, nav, and strobe, and those are all set up as needed. Then I did something a little different. So with the magneto switch, I was thinking of a way of how can I actually start two engines independently? How can I make this work? And then I thought, well, what if we use conditions? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a condition and we're going to hold our yoke full deflection to the left to start engine one. And then when we want to, to have engine two start and affect its magnetos, we're going to hold ailerons all the way to the right. And now the right engine or engine two magnetos will trigger. If we don't have it fully deflected right or fully deflected left, then moving the mags will fire nothing. So this is gonna let us go through that whole mag sweep and then let go, be able to go all the way back to off, move to the other one and step through all the mags. So, all right, why don't we jump inside and just quickly run through how all the switches ended up working out inside the Baron and let's go ahead and start doing things. So we're gonna throw on the Lego block so that the GUI is gonna follow as we're pressing the real switches. Go ahead and get our battery on. So there we go, our battery has fired up. We can see that our props can go into that full feathered position and you see that motion it creates so let's go ahead and get our props full uh, we're going to go ahead and as you saw coming up out of the detent the engine fuel selectors open up so we do have our parking brake on so parking brake is the first switch we're going to go ahead and we've got our cowl flaps are open so that'll let in some extra air so that's good and we could if we wanted to run the fuel pump but at this time i don't think we're going to need it so this is where you see none of those mag switches are turning so with it fully deflected now we can go ahead there goes engine number two so if we hop outside you see engine number two is running go back inside and now with the yoke not fully deflected we can rotate that key that magneto switch back so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on the fuel we're going to go mixture rich we're going to crack the throttle we're going to hold it to the left and now we can move our mags and there goes engine number one. We are in the both position. And now if I wanted to do a mag check, well, I'll do the same thing. I'll hold the direction I want. We'll be able to drop a mag, drop a mag, go back up, back to both, switch over to the other side, drop a mag, drop a mag, back up to both. Well, now that we've got those on, let's go ahead and get our alternators on, our gens are on. Let's go ahead and get our avionics switch on. 
MFD came alive. Now we can go ahead and pedo heat on. We're going to put our beacon light on. You can see our landing lights can come on. Our taxi light can come on. We got our nav light and we've got our strobe lights. Then we came across and our ice light first. And so that's right next to our parking brake. Then we've got our flood lights. Then we've got our panel lights. So you can see that panel backlighting turns on. Then we've got our de-ice switches. And we've got our fuel pumps for the electric fuel pumps, followed by our cowl flaps. Go ahead, put our flaps into the takeoff position. You can see all of our axes are nicely moving. And of course, we can enable heading mode, disable, so it's a toggle. So it'll toggle between pitch and roll. We've got our nav switch. And again, we can toggle nav on off. We've got our approach mode, approachable toggle. Uh, VNAV, which of course you can't use because we don't have VNAV programmed in yet. Altitude hold, toggle it back to pitch. VS mode, pitch. And then, of course, flight level change mode, and of course, toggle it back off. And of course, like I said, the knob, one of my favorites. So, in altitude, down here below 10,000, we're moving in increments of 100. And then, once we hit 10,000, and let's go ahead and just zoom in a little bit more for you. So then as you can see, up to 10,000, boom, into 500 increments. Below, you're in the 100s. And then I went ahead and when we got up here to 18,000, now we start going up in 1,000 increments. I'd say that pretty much comes to a close, guys. I don't know what else to think about at this moment, but hopefully this gets you going with the Bravo. And of course, if you've watched my alpha videos and you set your alpha up the same, you got bonus alpha time. Uh, but this is going to work great for the Baron. This should work for other twin props as well. And of course, it should work with a single prop if you just use the single prop levers. But don't worry, we'll be back soon with another Bravo video on doing jets and we'll probably start off with the uh working title cj4 so as always guys hit that like button subscribe if you haven't and come along with us next time when we'll do some more bravo thanks for watching have a great day